The Flash is a student form for students produced by students. Students make all content decisions, research, write, shoot, and broadcast news stories they deem important to the ECU community. Stay tuned. Good morning, ECU. I'm Ricardo. And I'm Miguel. And here are this week's Flashtastic stories. Our first story comes from Jack, talking about how students feel during distance learning. Then we have a story from Faye, talking about the names from malls around the Twin Cities. And lastly, we have a review from Alvin on the game Among Us. Hey Ricardo, how do you feel about the amount of work you've been given since full-time distance learning has started? Well Miguel, I actually think that this year's distance learning has gone much better than last year's. Interesting. Well here's Jack asking students on how they feel about distance learning. As we are almost a month into distance learning, I decided to see how some students felt about the year so far. I mean, you're used to doing the homework generally on your iPad, but adding in another four hours already of going to classes it just gets excessive uh do you think the school or administration should change anything about how much work students are receiving well i mean i think a change they could make is just have like a majority of all the work just do it like the end of a week some classes already do that and it makes it pretty helpful they could take down the amount of zoom classes that they're doing because it feels like whenever I'm in a Zoom class, it's just half of the time. It's you're not really learning as much as what you would if you were in school. Everything right now is just stressful, especially since being a senior, you know, you've pretty much already all applied for colleges or are applying right now. And by the time this quarter ends, they're not really going to be looking at this quarter for your grades sometimes it does like i'll have zooms and work in the same day and i just don't get everything done which is pretty stressful signing off for the flash this is jack well clearly students have many different opinions on distance learning but hopefully we can all come back to school and be together soon and miguel what's your favorite mall well my favorite mall is southdale in edina well do you know why it ends in dale no clue well, here's Faye with the story on the names of shopping malls. With the holiday season right around the corner, lots of people are buying gifts for their friends and family. Most people will be heading to a mall, but there's a lot of places near the Twin Cities to choose from. Uh, the Outlet Mall in Eden. Burnsville Center. There's Rosedale Mall, Southdale Mall. And Richdale. You may or may not have noticed something about the names of all these malls. A lot of them end in the word Dale. So why might this be? Probably some rich dude named Dale. Name of the company or just like a brand, I guess. The real origin comes from the original developers of Southdale Mall in Edina. Somebody joked that they were building a mall over Hill and Dale, which is a phrase that means far away. It was literally in farmland. They wanted a similar kind of mall at, at all four corners of the metro area. It was a marketing and branding uh, idea. So that model was the dominant mode for the last 70 years or so. I think the question now is what is the future of malls because malls have been closing as online shopping and as big box retail and competed with malls. Despite the importance of malls as a place to gather in the past, their future is up in the air. But whatever happens to malls as we currently know them, at least those around the Twin Cities will have left a rich legacy and a few peculiar name choices. Signing off for The Flash, this is Faye. I never would have guessed that that was the reason many Twin Cities malls end with the name Dale. Neither would I, but besides going to the mall during your free time, what else have you been doing during your free time? I've actually been playing Among Us with friends. Have you heard of it? Yeah, I love playing it with my friends. Well, here's Alvin with the review on Among Us. 
The 2020 year has been one of the most hectic years that we've experienced, but for gamers, it has been quite interesting. Among Us has quickly become one of the most played and viewed games of 2020. From YouTube to Twitch, it has seen a great amount of success in a very short span of time. And like all trends, it quickly made its way to Eastview High School. For those who don't know, in Among Us, you are either a crewmate or imposter. As a crewmate, you are responsible for doing your tasks and finding who is the imposter. And as an imposter, your job is to eliminate all crewmates while you blend in and fake tasks, all while avoiding being seen and voted out. All this and more has made the game very popular. But what do we play it for? Firstly, my little sister. She would always shout on the game, and I'd just like hear her from downstairs. So I was just like, okay, I might as well play. Uh, everyone plays it differently. Again, I just like to mess around, you know, just do whatever I want. It doesn't matter if I win, really, as long as I have fun. Say nothing about the game is like super eye catching, but I like the game. It's it's pretty it's entertaining. Uh, I like playing with friends more than in random groups. It's more fun to be able to like brag to them after the game. I love winning when I'm an imposter. That's that's a plus. Winning when crewmate feels good, but winning as an imposter, it just makes you feel ten times more better. You can play it on PC and mobile right now, and it's free to play on Apple and Android devices. So make sure you grab your friends and don't be left out of the fun like Jaden. I was introduced to it by a bunch of my friends and it was in class and they're like, oh my God, let's play Among Us. I was like, what's Among Us? And then they started clowning me. Great review from Alvin. Hopefully you guys decide to try it out soon. Well, Isu, that's all we have for today. Hope you have a good weekend and, and stay, stay tuned, tuned for the credits. credits. Hey everyone, welcome to my kitchen. It's the holiday season and a lot of people have special traditions when it comes to food. So today I asked a couple of students to see what their favorite holiday treat is. Favorite holiday treat is fudge. Favorite holiday treat pro would probably be gingerbread. Uh, my favorite holiday treat is frosted sugar cookies. Holiday treat is these little chocolate covered cherries that they look like mouses and they got almonds for ears. Well, mine is unicorn poop, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make this super simple, super quick, and super tasty recipe. What you're going to need is a bag of puff corn, one to two packages of white chocolate chips, I say go with two because the more the merrier, sprinkles, a microwave, and some parchment paper. Now let's get started. First, lay down your piece of parchment paper, add weight to the side so that they do not roll up later. Lay your puff corn out on the parchment paper, and you may need two sheets like me. Pour your chocolate chips into a microwave safe bowl. You should probably start with half of the bag and then do a couple of rounds of melting and then microwave for about a minute or until the chocolate chips get melted. Stir the chocolate around to make sure that it is all smooth. Now you're gonna wanna drizzle the chocolate over the puff corn and as you go along, add some sprinkles before the chocolate dries. Repeat these steps until all of the puff corn is covered. Once the chocolate is dry, I recommend putting your unicorn poop into a plastic bag or container to keep it from getting stale. And that's it. This is a great, simple treat and holiday gift idea. But as always, remember to be COVID safe. Have a healthy and safe holiday season, Eastview.